All right, all right, guys. Welcome to today's stream. Welcome to the kitchen table. How are you guys doing? Got any builds going? What's up, you guys? Let me know if you're here in the chat. Drop me a line. Thanks for the hearts, guys. So today, we've got a GEPRC Cinelog 25. This is a V2 version. It has TBS Crossfire Nano, GPS, and it has a DJI-O3. So we're gonna walk you through some of that setup in this video, and we're also gonna update these goggles too, as well as work with the TBS Tango too. So if that's something you're interested in, hang out, have some coffee, and uh, let's get right into it. Uh, I got that Lavasa again. Grand Sessioni. I have no idea how to say this, but this is the coffee we're drinking today. Nothing like a mid-afternoon coffee. Mm, that's good. Got a little trail mix over here to my left. Keep me going. And some Cheez-Its. I'm sponsored by Cheez-Its, by the way. That's our new channel sponsor. Them in Costco. I was in Costco the other day. I was walking with Rebecca and I was completely, you know, out of the drone element. I wasn't thinking about it at all. We were just shopping. And I see this guy and his wife kind of walking toward us. You know, he was around my age. I wasn't thinking anything about it, but. He had a Cotopaxi jacket on. It was very similar to the one I've had in the past. And uh, he's looking at me. And you're wondering sometimes, like, why is this person looking at me? No idea. Um, and he says, hey, the drone guy. I'm like, I was, I like, to, so, like totally taken uh, off guard. 
I wasn't expecting it. But sometimes you get spotted in the wild. So that was cool. But um, aside from being embarrassed from getting spotted, I, um, I learned that he is a pilot who's going to go and compete in a drone race in Saudi Arabia. So he's flying out on the 15th, and I just thought that was so cool. So um, big props out to him, and good luck with the race. I think that's awesome, man. Uh, FPV is bigger than me, much bigger than just drone camps. Um, such a global community, and it's so cool. And I'm always happy to be a part of it, happy to meet you guys. That's why we're doing events now with the FPV West. You can come out and fly with us in person. <clears throat> Meet me, make some new friends. And I've made friends since we started doing these events. And that's the coolest thing about it. Is that I'm getting to know some of you guys. That's a lot of fun. What's up, Jasmine? Hello from the US all the way to New Zealand. That's awesome. See, I was telling uh, Rebecca about this. The power of social media, YouTube, live streaming, Facebook. Being able to reach out across the globe just with a webcam, it's pretty cool. It's really cool. It used to be the only social, like, the only social media outlets out there was, like, television and radio. And the only way you could get your word out there was to be on one of those and pay big bucks. And now anybody with a phone can do it. Um... So if you want to start your own drone channel, you should do that. So I've been charging this guy's TBS Tango 2. This is uh, our buddy Sam's setup here. All this stuff right here that you see is brand new. Just pulled it out of the box. He also has a GP11 that he's going to mount on the front here. So that would be super nice. Uh, and this radio has not been set up yet. It's completely fresh. And uh, we'll go into those menus and we'll do some binding. Uh, first thing I like to do is go ahead and get the goggles updated. So uh, a brand new set of goggles. I have the uh, battery over here. This is one of mine. This one's a little more charged up. And you want to have a battery that's more than 50% when you start like playing around with these goggles or trying to update them. Um, so I'm going to get the coffee out of the way for a sec. Go ahead and plug these in. And I'm just going to turn these on. You're also going to need a, a USB-C cable, so make sure you grab one that's a data cable. I have a, an extra GoPro cable here, and this works great. It works both ways. So once those are on, we're going to go ahead and open up DJI Assistant. DJI Assistant. Consumer Drone Series. And if this one doesn't work, we'll use the other one. There's actually two versions of this, kind of confusing. The other one's called DJI Assistant 2, DJI FPV series. Uh, Dean asks if I prefer TBS to ELRS. Um, yes, I do. So we're gonna plug those in, okay. Now those are plugged in, as you can see. And hopefully, we're gonna make a connection. I have to use these converters on the MacBook, which kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, USB to USB C. And USB C unplugs notoriously. It's kind of a pain. So let's see. Let's see if we uh, made a connection. Okay, there we are. So you see, uh, there's a little bit of lag in the live stream, maybe. Uh, but right now. We are connected. So first thing you want to do is click on the DJI Goggles 2, start activation, confirm your account, and yeah. Now we're doing that. Activation success. Cool. Okay, awesome. I don't know if you guys are seeing this. Let me know if you're seeing this in the chat. It seems that my screen has like frozen up or something. does happen so DJI assistant let's close that open it back up all right I'm using OBS today hmm 
That's good coffee. All right. Can you use a standard battery, standard Lion battery bank when using the goggles too? I believe so. What's up, drone ready? Welcome to the stream. Screen share is frozen. I don't know why. This sucks. I'm trying to teach you guys how to do something and it's screwing around. Let me uh, let me try something here. Go to configurator. So we're just gonna switch it up. That's beta flight. Now we're gonna go back to uh, the assistant two. See if it refreshes. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, so now that you guys can see that it's active, you're gonna click on this, and now that we've registered, we're gonna check out the latest version, which is from 9.21, and you're gonna hit upgrade. So we're gonna start upgrading these. Start the update. Now it's gonna go through the download process, transferring and then the update. Cool. It's happening. So some of you guys, you don't want to go through this process. You don't want to set up something. So we have something down at the bottom right hand corner of the screen that we just did a new logo for. It's FPB Service Center. Let me know what you think about that uh, logo right there. That's on our website. On dronecamps.com. And this setup right here, again, this is our friend Sam's. We're going to try to get this shipped out today. If not today, tomorrow. Uh, priority mail. Okay, the update failed. You got to love that. So sometimes when that happens, it's a good idea to switch. Um, if that happens, Switch over to the other, the uh, DJI Assistant 2 FPC series. I've had this happen before, so not surprised. Okay. So let's go ahead and close that out. DJI browser. Quit, yes. So we're gonna open up the uh, DJI Assistant 2 FPC series, okay? Let's make that one active. Let's go ahead and uh, switch over there. The, this is the FPB series, by the way, so. Okay, we're gonna unplug this, plug back in the goggles. So I let him, let him activate, but it didn't let him uh, start the update. And this is like trial and error with some of this stuff sometimes. Uh, you meant the pocket? Uh, I like the boxer. I'm not a big fan of the pocket. It's, it's good for some people because it's a budget radio, but I just want a bigger radio in my hands. I just like a, I'm kind of old school, but boxer, it's more of a mid-size radio. We're gonna go back to uh, the consumer drone series version, okay? We're just gonna try to update from there again. So go ahead and click goggles two. Now might have white might want us to do is upgrade that version first and then move up. It might not let us skip a version, so we'll just try that. Uh, we're just gonna go version by version here.
I was gonna live stream earlier today and then landscaping showed up. <laughs> it's raining outside, but they came anyway. All right, now it's transmitting. So it didn't wanna skip a version. So if you pull a brand new pair of goggles out of the box and you have several updates to make, uh, it's pretty obvious that you're gonna to need to go through one at a time, okay? So now they're updating. I just wanted to do it in order. And I was trying to update the Integris the other day, a different client that we had uh, for a service center service, and this pair of Integris would not hook up to either DJI Assistant. Uh, I also tried to do it on a PC, because someone online said, hey, do it on a PC that works on a PC. Mine wouldn't work on the Mac, only on a friend's PC. So I did that, tried all different cables, still didn't work. So I, I had to go back to the DJI Fly app. My, my worst fear in the world is that they want us to start using the DJI Fly app on the DJI 04 goggles. That's gonna kinda suck. I don't wanna use my phone to update things. I wanna be able to use my laptop. All right, 85%, moving along. And this software is funny. It reminds me of like just about any installation that you do on the Mac. It gets to 99% and it freezes and it stays there and it makes you think that it crashed. And just when you're about to give up, it pushes through and it's like, I'm done. <laughs> All right, so we're done with that one. Um, now let's go back and we'll see what version we're on. So guys, we're up to uh, 1.7 there. Let's get to 1.8, because that's gonna give us full features. Go ahead and upgrade there. Push start update and we're off to the races. I'm gonna have some more coffee. And if you're brand new to drone camps or drones or FPV in general, welcome. Welcome to the hobby, this is fun. Uh, Blue Sky says I was able to update a few things this week in the DJI S2. Nice. Welcome to the stream, Randy. Good to see you. Hope Dan's doing good. Got to get you guys out on a bike ride. So uh, while that's updating, transmitting is just frozen at zero. Let me just make sure. Yeah. It's just going to jump in there. It's, yep. It doesn't want to update. So if it won't update, we'll just have to, to do what we can. Um, let's go back. All right, dogs too, we'll go back in. Yeah, we've been doing these bike rides and getting some friends out on these electric bikes. Diego's got a one wheel and we've been having a ball. We have a cool video of that coming up. Um, Art and Diego and I went on a ride the other day. So I'm gonna refresh that. Click this little refresh button. That doesn't work, unplug it. Okay, and then come back in. What I probably need to do right now is uh, go ahead and disconnect this. We're gonna restart the goggles to initiate the new firmware. And uh, turn these off. Let's go ahead and restart them proper way to do things here okay what's up Dan what's up Johnny D Dean Nes Cafe Americano I'm gonna have to try all the coffee so I'm more recommendations of which coffees you guys like all right let's go ahead and plug these babies back in and uh, let's start this update. And this happens sometimes when you're trying to load up your goggles uh, and do an upgrade. Crashes do happen. Or maybe it could be your internet, it could be the cable. If your goggles won't hook up to the assistant software, just try a different cable. 
use one that you've used with like a GoPro, make sure it's a data cable. Uh, there's nothing worse than hooking up just a charging only cable and then nothing's happening. So we're downloading. Nice, the screen's working. Screen share. I saw this crazy uh, USB-C comparison the other day for that new Apple C charging cable and data cable. It's actually this one right here that's running the stream from uh, our Insta360 link webcam. And the technology inside the end of this thing is pretty intense. Like Apple does some serious development and you don't even see it. But what they did was they, they did a CAT scan of all these different USB-C cables, including like the Amazon favorites, um, just a cheapy charge cable, and the difference between the noise isolation, how the cables are laid out, the PCBs, um, the soldering. The soldering was really different from a cheap USB to the Apple USB. I think there's an Apple USB-C cable that costs, I wanna say it's like $100. I don't know which one of you guys are paying a hundred bucks for a cable, but that's crazy. A hundred dollars is a, a lot for a cable. But apparently this cable can do anything. It can live stream, it can download uh, super high data speed for video. And for dumping large amounts of data over to an SSD, that's pretty cool. You know, essentially like uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, Blue Sky, I have maybe more cables than most people. It just depends on if you're an IT guy, like some of those guys have boxes of them. Um, I have like a whole, it looks like a grapevine. I have a whole bunch of them hanging on uh, my lamp in my shop. All right, now we're at 100% on those goggles, so that's good news for Sam. Let's go ahead and uh, let's just go back. And now we're current. Cool. So we're going to close that software. Let's go ahead and move that out of the way. And let's turn off these goggles. You want to restart them. So press and hold all the way down to zero. Okay. I'm just going to unplug this. Cool. Okay, I'll turn this off for now. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the Tango 2. This one's been charging on my USB port for a while, so. Welcome to Tango 2. Welcome to Tango 2. Probably one of my favorite portable radios of all time. They also have folding sticks if you buy the better version. I think the cheaper version of this doesn't have folding sticks, but when you're traveling, this is key because you won't break a stick when you're traveling. It's pretty epic. Um, I love that. I wanted Radio Master to do something like that, but they did some um, with a the pocket they unscrew and they go on the back. I'd like to see foldables, but they're more expensive to manufacture. I get it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so at this point, what we need to do, guys, let me clear out my screens here and make sure I can see what I'm doing. We've updated the firmware on the goggles. We're good there. Um, so the next part of this setup is that we have model number one here. So uh, we want to go ahead and get this bound up to the send log. I got a 4S battery over here. And uh, generally, I'm going to tell you take your props off in the house because I cut the tip of my finger off. That wasn't funny. And most of these Cinelogs, the way they have them set up is the receivers right here. So bring that a little closer. You can see that. There is a gold button. And once you get into the bind menu here and you press bind, you can go in here with a bamboo skewer and you're going to press the gold button just underneath where this UFL connector is. It's usually right there. Okay. You might be able to see that in the video. Um, right about there. 
almost behind the post right there. But so we're gonna go ahead and uh, go into the menus here and beta flight setup. You don't want that one. You want to go down to uh, TBS light. Come on, camera focus. Okay, back off a little bit. So it's the second one down. It says TBS agent light. Okay, click that. Now go to Tango 2 XF, not Wi Fi. Click that. And now you see a whole menu of things here. So you have bind, radio settings, Mavlink, video TX, and uh, team racing set fail safe. Um, you want to set fail safe usually to no pulses. Okay. So I'm going to go back to bind. And the greatest thing about TBS versus ELRS, and I love this, it does an automatic receiver update. We're going to go ahead and plug in the battery. I'm going to drink some more coffee. Okay, sounded cool. All right, brave man, take your props off. Well, that's annoying. So generally I'll go on beta flight and I'll set up all the switches first because from the factory, you just don't freaking know what they're doing. So we're going to press bind here on the radio. You'll see that green light. And what you want to do is go ahead and press that gold button on the receiver. Okay, once I do that, it should turn a color for us. Now it says binding, and it's going to ask you if you want to update this receiver. And you're going to say yes. Well, that's annoying. I might have to go into beta flight, turn that off. I'm going to do that. Do that real quick. All right. Thanks for that, uh, Gap RC. <laughs> All right. Let's hop over to Beta Flight real quick. We're just going to turn off those in the mode. So, uh, if you have one of these and you're following along with this tutorial, go ahead and hook up your USB-C cable. We just have enough clearance to get in there. So, um, let's hop over to Beta Flight. Do, do, do. All right. Okay, so we can set set up. Everything looks good there. All right, we're gonna go into this in a little bit here in a minute. Um, I might have to update my beta flight, but we're just gonna go ahead and turn off. Uh, that pesky beaver. And actually, I'm just going to slide this over. Press save. And we're going to disconnect. So now when we turn on the cable, we turn on the uh, quad. Not the cable. Okay. Let's unplug that. Let's grab our battery. And let's go back to the bind menu. Okay. And I know a lot of you guys have these drivers. Don't use the driver to press the button because you could short something out on the quad. Um, so keep your driver away from your quad when you're trying to bind up stuff. So again, we're going to press the bind button. Bind button. Okay. I'll push this receiver over. Let's see if I can get in here and press that. Okay. It's moving a lot. It's going to do that. It wants to slide behind the post. <laughs> no. Okay, so now it's going to ask you if you want to update the Nano RX. Okay? And you're going to say yes to that. Just enter. And now it's going to start this process where it's going to go through. And it's going to probably take about two minutes or so. And sometimes with these TBS radios, you're going to see like it's going to be unbinding forever. And eventually this is going to go green. So right now it's red, it's flashing, and it will go green eventually. And when it does, you can unplug everything, turn everything back on. 
and you'll be good. You should have a green light on your receiver. I mean, that's pretty much TBS binding in a nutshell. That's why so many people around the world love TBS. Um, not only does it have great range and penetration, and it's like a self-healing type of frequency, um, it's also encrypted, which is big for a lot of people. Which means they have a hella hard time hacking your drone to be able to take control of it. Um, so that's huge. Yeah, a little time out here, screen. And in this binds process, again, like sometimes it'll just sit there and say it's binding forever. Um, and sometimes it'll just be bound and work. And depending on the quad you have, the receiver you have, like sometimes the radio itself likes to be about three feet away from uh, the receiver that you're binding to. So that's, that's kind of a thing with some receivers especially like free sky receivers like the xm plus doesn't like to be sitting right next to the radio when it's binding because um, it just won't and you'll you'll actually fail safe okay so we're going to exit out of that we're going to unplug the quad and we're going to bind again we're going to plug in the quad So it updated the receiver already. We're going to hit the bind button. And I wish they would put like the, uh, the LED somewhere else on the RX because <laughs> it's really hard to see the button when the LED is there once it lights up. No, Crossfire is not dead. That's just YouTube stuff. It's me questioning, is it dead to me? Am I gonna finally make the full-time transition over to ELRS? And it's, it's gonna be a while, honestly. And so what this is doing, this is nice. Uh, the Tango 2 right now is, is updating the receiver and it says update it may actually be downgrading it to match the version on this radio. If this radio is newer than this one, it will make it match anyway. Um, so you can do all this in TBS Agent as well. You can download that firmware. You can update your radio, your RX. Uh, but this is the simple way. And this is the way that's, I mean, even if you're on the road, you don't need Wi-Fi. You don't need a phone connection to pair up your TBS Nano or your Crossfire to your Tango 2, um, which is great. So that's one of the perks of using TBS that everyone loves. Uh, I don't have to download the ELRS configurator and try to download a bin file and drop it into anything or um, do pass-through. Um, it just does it all for me. That's really great. So it updated it. Now it says RX is loading. Now it's binding. Gonna give that a little space. And once that finishes, we should see a green light. It's good coffee. Johnny says he's switching over to ELRS. That's cool, man. How's that going for you? Hopefully that's going okay.
So let's take a little poll in the room while we have you here. Let's uh, let's see who's using what. I'd like to know who's using the ELRS. And this is not like a company survey or any shit like that. This is just me wanting to know what everybody's using right now. So uh, if you're listening to the live stream and you have access to the chat, go ahead and put ELRS or TBS in the chat. I'd love to know what you're using. Mm, that's good coffee. Yeah, JP, I get that. I get you. I get that. I'm the same way. <laughs> Three means go. heard that now oh, listen say it baby say it telemetry lost. there you go telemetry lost so once you hear telemetry lost and you unplug your quad you know that you got a, a bind all right we're gonna go ahead and plug that back in now we got a solid green light on the radio and we're good there so now we can go ahead and bay of flight we're gonna set up some switches um, when you're setting up your Tango 2, make sure your switches are facing all the way towards you like this. Throttle stick all the way down. Um, and let's unplug everything. Now we know things are good. And we'll see if this data cable, sometimes it'll light up the receiver and you won't have to plug in a battery to see your channel maps moving, okay? All right, baby, I know. She's talking to me. Telemetry lost. Okay. We're going to open up Betaflight, and uh, man, quite a few of you guys are using ELRS. That's, that's pretty surprising. I figured more of uh, our crowd was on, on TBS. All right, so. Telemetry recovered. Yes. Oh, cool. Okay, so now we can check out our channel maps. and. If, and let's just go ahead right into beta flight. Okay. Now what I might do, I'm gonna close that out real quick. Um, I'm gonna take you back out to uh, kitchen table here. And You want to go to um, GitHub, type in Betaflight Configurator, and go to the releases. Uh, click on Assets, make that drop down, and grab whatever operating system you have. Um, this one's from September 28th. I feel like that's already what I got, but we'll see. 10.10. .10. Betaflight 10.10. .10. Okay. You want to be using the most current version of Betaflight. All right, so we're just going to open up the disk image. We're going to extract that to uh, applications. Okay. You want to replace the old version. Go ahead and do that. All right, 449.6 megabytes. Betaflight has gotten much fatter over the years, but now we have a, an interface. Before it used to be mostly text when it was clean flight. Now we have like pretty interface. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that in. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and open up that. Max security, it doesn't want me to open it because it's an unverified, uh, wants me to move it to the trash. <laughs> unverified developer. So if you're on a Mac, go ahead and go into your system settings and say open anyway. Go to privacy. And security. Okay, so open anyway. Click that. It's at the bottom of the screen there. Use your password. Let it do it. Say open. All right. So let's get back to that. So let me screen share with you here. We got this version. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, go ahead and connect to Betaflight. And now you shouldn't see any pop-ups about versions. Um, you don't really want to save from an older version of Betaflight onto your FC because you could kind of like possibly mess something up. Uh, we don't want to do that. So. Let's check uh, the quad setup. Now this is from GetParC, so everything should be pretty good. So I'm gonna reset the Z-axis and that brings the rear of the quad toward us. Um, so when you're, you're testing out, uh, I'm gonna make this a little smaller so you can see. This would be a great little explanation of uh, flight controller setup. Um, this flight controller appears to be on a 45 degree angle. We'll, we'll double check that inside the configuration tab. Um, but when you tilt it back, you should go back like that, left, right, and forward. Okay, so that looks good. While you have it flat on the table, it's a good time to go ahead and calibrate the uh, accelerometer. So we're gonna calibrate that. Do that, your quad will fly much better, okay? Now in the ports, we're just gonna look around and see what they have here um, and see what they have set up. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. So you guys can follow along. So UR1 looks like that's where our DJI OSB, uh, OSD is going to be. And that's MSP display port. Okay. The receiver is on UR2. And that's Serial RX for Crossfire. So that is checked. So that's set up properly. Okay. Now we didn't change anything here, so we don't have to save it. Okay. So when I go to configuration, uh, barometer, it doesn't look like they have it on this quad. And I don't see any board and sensor alignment changes for any of the different axes. So everything's zeroed out right there, which leads me to believe that maybe it's straight on or maybe the flight controller is just, I believe it's built into a 45 degree angle. So one thing we're gonna change here is the arm angle. We're gonna change that to 180, you wanna do that. That way, turtle mode will work. Uh, RX loss and set, we're gonna have that checked for an ESC beeper, super important. And let's just go ahead and check anything else out here. And everything else looks, looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, save and reboot. Okay. Now we're gonna go down to the CLI real quick and we're just gonna check like what version of beta flight is on here. So type in version in the prompt. Looks like beta flight STM 32 G4 7X 4.5 August 2023. So that means that the firmware on here will have HD OSD. And if you're setting up a DJI 3, it's got to have HD OSD inside beta flight. When we go to OSD in these menus, it if it doesn't say oh, uh, HD, then you don't have the most current version of, of Betaflight firmware on your flight controller to be able to support HD OSD. That means you'll never get OSD on your DJI goggles. Uh, so we can look at this layout here. It looks like everything's kind of at the top of the screen. And what we can do is we still have to bind up the goggles to the O3, and we'll do that in this video as well. Uh, but I kind of like where things are here. I like to add the total voltage 
So I'm gonna go down here to battery voltage. I'm gonna click that and that'll show up in the middle screen. Just grab it and drag it, okay? And I'm gonna bring this down. And I'm actually gonna bring our battery uh, telemetry all the way down here. So we have individual cell voltage. If you're using a Lion, that one's really important because you don't want to fly down past 2.8 volt on a Lion battery. If it's a LiPo, you definitely don't want to fly down that far. So up here at the top, we have our satellite count. And if you don't see GPS on your OSD, that means the GPS is not active in the configuration. And since this is a binding flight quad, we're going to go to configuration real quick. Scroll down to the very bottom. Uh, and yeah, this has been changed around. So let's go to GPS here. U blocks. And we don't we actually get in packets. That's pretty cool. Looks like it's trying to get packets. So we don't have a battery plugged in. When you plug in a battery, you're going to see packets come through. If you don't, you need to make sure that you have GPS active. Okay. So that looks good. Power and battery. Let's go ahead and turn that down to about 3.2 on the minimum cell voltage. Uh, you can go under that if you want. And then warning cell voltage, I'm going to put it down to about 3.2 as well. That way when you throttle bump and you have a temporary sag in your battery, you're not going to get a warning on the, on the main screen. It's kind of annoying. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to receiver. Now this is pretty important, the, the configuration tab for receiver. If your quad looks like this, you have problems. I've seen people just plug in a battery and take off with things um, set up like this, and you can see that there are different things going on here with everything. Um, so um, at this point, it looks like we do have some auxiliary switches are working, and all of our sticks are showing up. That's great because serial our uh, UART setup, we're on the proper port, and CRSF is uh, selected. That's what you want. If this is not working for these two tabs right here, and you're setting this up from scratch, you, you, you might have to actually select these. So all, all the Crossfire receivers are CRSF and they're serial um, UR in the UART in the ports. So again, that's UART2 right here on serial RX in this column. If you have this selected, that's not going to work. MSP is not going to work for um, CRSF crossfire. Okay, so we've got a wacky quad here. This needs to be helped out, and it's set to the channel map says AETR1234. So we're going to change that down to Spectrum, and that's TAER1234. Click Save. And now that should fix it. If it doesn't fix it, you're going to need to uh, go into your radio and change it around manually. And that's not the funnest thing in the world. So now we refreshed it. We can check our sticks here. And uh, I'm just going to see if I can't uh, grab Betaflight here real quick for you and scooch that out of the way. Because what I want you to see here is stick movement along with the channel maps. Okay, I'm just going to scooch that all the way over. Let's grab the radio and we'll test this out. So the right stick is your roll and your pitch. Okay. Roll should go to the right like that. Left. That's good. You can see the quad reacting. And that's kind of showing me the rate setup. Right now it's stock beta flight rates. And the rates are how fast or smooth uh, things move. Cinewoops may have a softer rate. Whereas FPV Freestyle has, you know, like a schizophrenic rate, fast and flippy, or soft and flowy. Just depends on how you fly. So the roll is good. Pitch should go up like that, down like that. Yaw, left, right, and throttle up, down. That's good, okay? Now we're going to check out the arm switch. I'm going to make it this switch right here on the far left. That's a great switch because... Uh, it is a push button switch and it doesn't stick up. And that's what a lot of people love because we've had people take off their radio off their neck and uh, catch a, a stick style switch, like the arm switch uh, on the TX-16S. 
and flick it into arm and actually arm the quads on themselves. I've done it myself. It's super scary. Um, so these flat arm switches are where it's at. You want to get something like that. The boxer also has that. I love that. So uh, auxiliary one, that's this button. The next button over this three position switch, that's going to be our mode switch. This will be our beeper switch and this two position switch all the way on the right hand side, that's going to be our turtle mode switch. Okay. Uh, so that looks great. Let's go ahead and uh, go over now to, uh, before we go out of the screen, let's go ahead and click save. You want to do that. Now let's go to our mode screen. And right here, when I move these switches, you're going to see auxiliary one. We're going to test aux one. Okay. That's arm. That's good. So now we're going to go to our modes. And I don't like the way it's set up from GetRC. I'm going to slide this one over and you just grab it in that yellow bar and scooch the end over until it's nice and tight and centered. Okay. So right here in position one on the three position switch, we're in angle mode and that's stability mode for the beginners who don't know. Okay. Now in the middle position, I'm going to switch that over to the middle. See how horizon becomes active. And if horizon's not there, let me X this out real quick so you can see it. So I'm going to add range. The next thing you need to do is you need to add what well, auxiliary is on. So we know that this switch is aux 2. Select aux 2 there. You can scooch this in if you want to. And when I first started working in clean flight and beta flight, uh, I was trying to figure out how to set up acro. And acro doesn't exist in this list of things. So uh, if you're new to this, when you switch all the way over and it's in the dead zone, that will be acro. It's confusing, I know. <laughs> um, so now you're in back in angle mode. So you can test that. You can see that little gold bar move back and forth and we're good. And save that and you can double check it if you want to go back to your receiver and auxiliary two, you can see mid position all the way down. Doop, doop, doop. That's good. Now we're going to go to auxiliary three in the modes. We're going to go down and we're going to put our beeper on that one. Okay. So that's three. It's already set to three. Gap RC does that sometimes. So that's this switch right here. That's off three. And now that pesky little beeper will only beep when it's all the way out facing away from you. Okay. That's good. And GPS, I'm not going to put flip over crash. We're going to put, uh, GPS rescue on aux four. So you want to click add range. We're going to select aux four. And that is this switch all the way over, but we're going to drag this out. We're going to move this. Uh, we don't want GPS rescue to, um, okay. Accidentally get hit. So we want to put that on this type of switch because here, who cares if I hit the beeper, but uh, we want to really be wanting to click that for a GPS return. So now that's active and that's looking good. Everything else here. I don't have LEDs on this squad yet. Um, if you did though, you can put them on user and pre-arm I'm not going to use here. So I just want it to arm. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, make sure you click save and let's go over to the motors. Uh, the motors is super important. You need to be double, triple checking this. Um, this is the way it came from the factory. Okay. So as it sits right now, it should fly and we're going to have to line of sight flight test this first and kind of a visual inspection here. It looks like they have uh, props in at the top and they have a right turn rear. So that's what we call this um, traditional quad X setup is right turn rear. And you can see that here on the screen uh, right here. So it shows me that a rotation of no motor number one, two, three, and four. And traditionally they're always set up like this. Now, if we reverse the motor direction, it would change everything to a props out configuration. And then the right rear motor is going to be turning to the left. Uh, a lot of cinema whoops nowadays and tiny whoops have props out in the front. These are props in. Uh, the reason that they like to do that is because if you crash into a tree, it'll help you get out of the tree easier than grabbing into the center. 
So it'll kind of push it away um, if their props out. So that just depends on how you want to set up your quad. So things look pretty good there. Uh, and I had a situation recently, and this might help you out if you're trying to figure out how to um, make sure that motor number one is on the correct spot. And you need motor number one to be over here on the right rear. If you load beta flight up and you go down here and you click this button right here, you can test each motor individually. And if you test this right here, make sure you have your props off. But if you move this little blue button up right here, it'll spin up the motor. And if motor one is up here, you need to reorder those motors. Uh, and the way you do that, pretty simple these days, you go to reorder motors, you click this button right here, and it will reorganize them to this quad X configuration, which is super cool. Um, so then you go back again, you arm this button, and you test motor number one, two, three, four. Test them individually, props off, and you'll see that magically motor number one has moved over here for you. So that's huge. I, I had this problem the other day. Um, back in the old school days, we had to kind of unplug things or try to figure out how to rearrange uh, our ESC layout and things like that, uh, or just uh, go over to BL Heli Configurator and just really get into it. Um, uh, this is a great little option here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn that off and you'll see that reorder motors comes back up. You can also uh, play around with motor direction. And what I do a lot of times with motor direction, if you're doing a, a custom build, you'll need to do that. Um, you can use BL Heli Configurator, a BL Heli 32. And I usually take a little piece of painter's tape and I stick it on the motor. That way it makes a little flag and you can kind of see which way. If I have a five inch, what I'll do is I'll grab like a three inch prop. It has a pretty wide center. I usually core out the center of the shaft. So if I momentarily flick the throttle, don't put a nut on it. It'll just kind of spin around for you and then it'll come to a stop. Sometimes if it gets too much power, it'll fly off and go up in the air. Uh, but a little three inch prop, it's not going to hurt you. Uh, just don't have your face right over top of it when you're doing that. Uh, but that's kind of an old school way of doing that. Um, but it seems for me, it's easier than using tape. Uh, I know some of you guys will use tape. Uh, Painter's tape works great. But anything is better than having a prop spin around and flying off the table. Because uh, if you only have two props on back here and no props on here, flight controller can freak out and throw the quad onto the floor. Um, and that's what happened to me when I was setting up the Cinehawk three and a half inch. It chopped the tip of my pinky off. Uh, I had to go to the ER. So, but Emax was so cool. They paid for my medical treatment, um, which was super nice. All right, Dean said you can't see the switches. Uh, so let me let me show you those switches real quick. We'll just we'll just backtrack a little bit. Um, go to modes, and here we go. This one. That's the arm button. Okay, right there. You can see that switching back and forth. Now this is our flight mode switch. Right now it's in angle. So we'll go ahead and flip over to horizon. Now I'll finally over to acro. Okay, beeper switch is here. And let me scroll down so you can see that move. That little gold bar should move. Okay, all the way out away from me, and it's beeping. It's not going to beep right now because we don't have battery plugged in. Uh, but our GPS rescue down there, aux four, you can see that move. And those are the switches. So at this point, our quad should fly. Um, but we still have more work to do. So we're going to go over to the presets. I'm just going to save again here. I just have a habit of pressing save. It comes from many years of working on computers. Uh, presets. So if you don't see WTF here, you need to find it. Um, you can scroll down to find it or you can search for it. So we're going to just type WTF. Um, it's not being found. Okay. 
let's just scroll down and manually look for it. Okay. And the, uh, did I just scroll past it? And these are great. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with these. Now the OSD may show up anyway. Because we have HD uh, native in Betaflight, which is great. The maximum number of let's see community. Let's do official. Select all. So at this point, we're pretty good in beta flight. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please do put them in the chat. WTF does not appear to be in this uh, presets menu. Interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's bind up the goggles. I'm gonna disconnect. We saved everything. So we go ahead and move Betaflight out of the way. Let's have some more coffee. All right. I was just using the Integra, so I'm kind of like searching for the power button on the goggles. Uh, press once and press again. It's the standard DJI way to power up things. Okay, now those are on. And we can leave the radio on for now. Uh, I really should have the props off. Make sure the switches are all in the forward position here. Everything is flush here, so we're not arming things. Okay, that's all the way up. That's good. Throttle all the way down. And let's crank this strap down a little bit. Okay. Let me unplug this baby. All right, All right guys. Grab your bamboo skewer to bind up the DJI 03. So. Inside the goggles, these are set from the factory to be on DJI 03, or it's set to Avada. And you're going to look inside your goggles, and these are brand new goggles, so you're going to need to select your language. I'm going to select English. Next. It wants me to do focus. Keep pressing next. And now it wants me to press the link goggles button. So that is right here. Press that. Go ahead and press that. Now you can hear it beeping. Pick up your quad. Look for the red light. And just by the red light, there's a little tiny button. Very hard to see. Press that with your bamboo skewer. You'll see it start to blink. And you'll hear it. Let's press again. You should see this go green. If this doesn't go green, it's not set to DJI 03 on the goggles. Okay. Okay. Goggles now into the main menu. And what we want to do is we want to swipe to the right. Once you swipe right, 
Oh, it's making me do all these tutorials. This is a brand new set of goggles. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So two fingers down can pull up a menu. One finger down can make it go away. Swipe right for the menu. Uh, now status at the very top, click status, and you want to switch it to DJI 03, okay? Oh, it's still making me do uh, all this tutorial crap. <laughs> Come on, let me into the menus. Press and hold the touch panel with two fingers to lock. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Why would I want to do that? Okay. All right, finally. No more tutorials, DJ. Jesus. I'm not a Mavic user. Okay, so we're going to swipe to the right. Oh, so the screen's locked. Press and hold to undo the screen lock. Okay. Now we're going to switch. Go up to status and select DJI 03. And now it is, it says it's switching. Just give it a second. You should hear it beep, you should hear it beep. Okay, it's good. Okay, so now that it's on DJI 03, let's go ahead and press our bind button again. You wanna press this button. You hear it beep. And we're good, it's green. So now we can check the OSD, see if our HD OSD is showing up, and HD OSD is showing up. I wish you could see that. Um, so without WTF, HD is active. And if you don't like where things are, I'm gonna go into Betaflight real quick, um, and I can change things around. So now the goggles are bound up, they're updated, the radio's working, all the modes are set up, I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to go back inside Betaflight. So unplug this real quick. We know that the channel maps are working correctly. So at this point you can line of sight flight test it outside preferably. Um, put your props on and give it a shot. So let's go back in Betaflight. Now HD OSD is weird. It's it's way different setup than analog. All right, okay. Let's bring a beta flight for you. And the reason that I say that is because uh, the screen looks huge inside the OSD, um, and when you move things, when you drag things around, it. Uh, it makes a lot more drastic change. So I'm gonna bring this uh, home direction arrow to the top in the middle of the screen. I like that to be there. Okay, save that. And you can also do the different OSD profiles, uh, one, two, and three if you want. You can change for different types of scenarios if you're a professional and you want a different type of OSD setup. If you're doing filming versus your long range stuff, um, you can have your long range OSD with a whole bunch of telemetry on here. Or you can do, uh, you know, kind of maybe you wanted a pro setup for just your battery voltage and your flight time. You just clean stuff up so you can kind of see what you're doing. But this quad is pretty much ready at this point. How are you guys doing out there? Let me know if you're uh, you good today, how you're doing. Just checking in with you guys. I've been wanting to do that recently. It's just uh, check in with everybody. See how you're doing. That's important. Check in with each other. How's your mental health? Hope you're doing good. It's freaking December, December 1st. People always get more depressed during the holidays, so um, hopefully we can keep you uh, cheery. So that's Betaflight. 
updated the goggles. This quad's ready to fly. And again, today we're drinking that Lavaza. This stuff's pretty good. That's what we're drinking. Let's go ahead and unplug from Betaflight. Okay. So that wasn't too hard, was it, guys? Had a couple things we had to fix, but ultimately we got to the point where we're pretty much ready to do a line of sight flight test. We have HD OSD on here. The channel maps are working. We have GPS is on here and ready on a switch. And things are looking good. That was hard to hear that, Dean. That's my worst fear. Kids are everything. My grandmother lost her son when he was 18. So my, we lost my uncle. So uh, I don't know what it's like to lose a kid, but and every day is a challenge. I'm glad you guys are getting better, Randy and Dan. 27, oh man. You know, I do a lot of, um, I've been doing a lot more praying lately because I've, uh, I've got a friend in the hospital right now who had a paragliding accident and uh, some friends of ours in the gorge were all putting prayers up for him. And I feel like the last couple years, especially with the way the world is, I don't know, maybe it's just me looking for comfort, but it seems like that God is working on, on me again. Uh, he just let me know, hey man, right here when you need me. But like Jelly Roll says, you know, like uh, in that song, um, I only pray to God when I need something. Uh, but scientifically, they think there's some correlation between like healing and putting some prayers out there. And you know, who knows? Maybe when you're putting positive vibes out there towards people, um, whether it's this war in Isra Israel and in Gaza, uh, Ukraine, or cultures around the world, something somebody close to you, a friend, family. But everybody say a prayer for Dean as well. I wish you the best in life, buddy. But I like to think like, you know, my dad passed away this year and I, and I like to think that like, my dad would want me to keep trucking and I bet your son would want you to keep trucking too. And my children, like no matter how bad it gets, um, for me, as long as my kids are here, I have to do good, you know? Um, it gives me incentive to, to not be lazy, to, to do my best and then that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. I do my best. But also doing your best is not like, you know, laying down on the couch and watching TV all day and eating my Cheez Its. Uh, it's engaging. Engaging with your kids. Be there for them. Get in their face and talk to them. Get them off their devices a little bit. That's why drones are so great. You can get outside your house and, and I was riding one wheels with Diego and Art the other day and I was saying like it's hard to be sad when you're outside doing something I believe in like the power of like going outside and being in the trees uh, getting dirty getting muddy getting wet whatever jumping in the ocean in the winter <laughs> just like living I mean, you can live inside your house, but it's not as much fun. Some people have a lot of snow out there right now. I know some of you guys are way up north. Um, freezing ass cold. Don't go too far outside. 
somebody was telling me in North Dakota, you have to have like an emergency kit in the trunk of your car or somewhere in your car in case you break down. Uh, you might have to spend the night somewhere in sub-zero temperatures in your car. That's insane. I can't live anywhere where it's like that. I can't do that. I'd rather live in Florida and be warm in January. <laughs> Oregon's about as cold as I can handle. It's just so cold. That's why I drink coffee all the time on the channel. Gotta have some Java. Keep myself warm. Either that or I'm drinking like green tea. Uh, in the evening sometimes I'll, I'll have an IPA or a brew. And I was talking to uh, somebody on the channel recently and saying, hey man, I gotta send you some coffee and beer from uh, Colorado. And I will definitely take you up on that, bro. If you're listening to this live stream and you're really good for that, man, I would go for that. <laughs> Your mom told you to spend some money. Well, spend some money, bro. Spend that cheddar. You can spend plenty of money in this hobby. Spend lots of money. But I appreciate the tips today. Um, super cool you guys to do that. And I got to give a shout out to one of my patrons as well. I'm going to say thank you for uh, Southwest, Southwest FPV. Send me a $150 gift certificate to a local pizza shop. How cool is that for your favorite YouTuber to give them the gift of food? Like Patreon's awesome, but not only is he a Patreon, send me $150 gift certificate to a pizza place. That's, man, that's freaking awesome. Uh, Dean. Dean was asking me, what's my favorite uh, drone of the present? What's my favorite Nazgul F4, F5? I like the, uh, the F5 DC, the dead cat. That's probably my favorite five inch right now. Uh, Baby Hawk 03 flies like a bat out of hell. It's awesome. It cut the tip of my finger off, but um, it's awesome. Oh no, the Cinehawk did that. Their center whoop, not the Baby Hawk 03. The Baby Hawk 03 is really awesome. It can fly and rip just about anywhere. It's a compact size and it doesn't sound like a, a five inch. So, you know, the Karens aren't going to come out of the woodworks on that one. That That's a nice one. That's a really nice quad. Um, actually, Randy and Dan got my uh, Baby Hawk 03 for me. And they're now ripping that one. So they just sent me a picture of it to, the other day and it's all set up. So I think Dan's flying that now. It's lunchtime here i'm all snacked out but uh it's time for me to figure out where i'm gonna go eat this afternoon yeah the baby hawk's awesome good i'm glad you guys like it it's so lightweight it's light fast and it's so small that you can kind of get out of things. Like if you get in trouble with it, you need to turn on a dime and like accelerate out. The, the power to weight ratio versus a five inch, I feel like it's almost better. Um, in some of those aspects. Mod pizza. That might be good. All right, Midnight Ariel. Same for me, too. I got to go pick my kids up soon. But hopefully, that kind of quick tutorial 
we had some uh, a few things we had to to go back and kind of redo. So you know, troubleshoot a few things live, which everything can't be perfect all the time in drones and FPV. So um, even I have to go back and uh, reinstall some software or grab a different cable. It just it happens all the time. Nine thirty-five. Oh, UK. Nice. I didn't realize you were in the UK. That's awesome. Sometime this month, we may do um, some more live streams when I get time in a quiet house like I've got today. Um, my girlfriend's kids won't be home until about uh, 2.45 or so. And my kids will, will be back here by about 4 p.m. Because I got to drive in Portland traffic. That always sucks. There's never enough roads in a big city. That's why I need an EV toll. That would be sweet. Just fly right out of the yard, right out of the driveway. Go straight to town, pick them up, boom, fly back home. Just hit a button. But you guys know I want to fly that. I want to be holding the sticks just I want to drive myself acro mode and my EV tall do a couple flips and rolls on the way home <laughs> not with the kids or maybe they'd want to do some flips and rolls I don't know kids are wild these days yeah we can do an ELRS build and set up next time uh, I don't know about a half time to do a build, but maybe a complete setup video. Uh, and hopefully EO rest doesn't like the monster doesn't come out and bite me in the ass. But thanks for that tip today, Midnight's Ariel. Thank you. Definitely went to the coffee fund. But let me know, give us some thumbs up and if you like the stream today. And uh, share this with somebody who needs to have some help with a DJI 03 setup, firmware for the goggles, TBS Tango 2 binds. Uh, and we can go further into how to set up channel map and direction and reversing things, uh, switches and uh, roll and pitch, throttle and all that good stuff. Uh, it's a little more tricky in that radio versus like the Radio Master TX16S. But I've done it a bunch of times. And sometimes when you go back into it, you just have to remember how you did something like two years ago. <laughs> but it was cool hanging with you guys again. We haven't done a live stream in a while, so this was a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys showing up and hanging out. We're also gonna update our uh, our Wi-Fi to be faster. So we should be pumping 2G soon. Uh, we just switched over, we just got a brand new modem and our ISP, we're paying actually a little bit less. We're supposed to get three times the speed we were, but we're still only getting 200 meg. Um, so I don't know if they actually upgraded our fiber yet. I don't know what the deal with this company is. They always tell you you're gonna, they're gonna update you and do all this stuff and then it's the same or worse. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with ISPs? Am I right? When it comes to ISPs, of course I'm right. And I hope you guys are liking the new format of the reviews, just trying to keep it more laid back, more real. Um, and it's not flashy, not a lot of cuts. We take our time, we explain things. And YouTube should have more channels like that. But yeah, guys, give me some thumbs up on this stream and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. I did, it was a lot of fun setting this quad up. So now I gotta go to the post office and uh, do a flight test of this one, get it out the door so our buddy Sam can get his setup this beautiful setup.
in the mail and he can start making videos and sharing with us in the drone camps FPV community. Go check out our website. If you need some help, this place right here is where you can send your quad and we'll do the entire setup for you. Um, FPV service center is live on dronecamps.com. You just select a plan. It's $149 for our professional setup service. And I will set up your drone and ship it back to you. Thanks, Dean. I appreciate you. I'm always here, guys. I'm always here. Coming up on 10 years. I've been here for 10 years doing this, and I love it. I'm going to keep doing it. As long as I can. But take care, my friends. I appreciate every single one of you on the channel and subscribe if you didn't mark thumbs up bro cliff dean randy and dan art if you're listening diego jp all you guys thanks for hanging keep shredding there shredder 911 let me know in the community tab what kind of stream you'd like to see coming up. Uh, we'll try to do something different. Or we'll do some more setup videos and you guys can keep learning. That's what life's all about. Guys, take care.